Do you hear that? Yeah. It's, it's, my, it's the door behind the red orchid. It's the door behind the... What? Hey, guys. Hello. Hey, Welcome nice to back. You guys will not believe what just happened to me. So I came to Earth to study in the most prestigious ballet school in the galaxy. And I cannot get through inter-system customs because my passport was at the school, but the school burned down <laughs> due to, you know, some like occurrences. So I guess my transporter just took me to the last place I was. I don't you know, your tale kind of reminds me of what we're reviewing, which is Suspiria. Have you, have you heard of that? Suspiria? Is that the one where there's the ballet school, the girl travels from New York to become the best ballet artist in the world? Yeah, Strange you know things what? occur. You've, you've clearly seen this film, so why don't you tell our audience what it's about? Okay. For instance, as she arrives at the school, there's a girl screaming about some flowers. She comes back the next day, and it turns out that girl had been killed. She starts ballet classes as normal. However, she sees some shard of glass, and then it starts giving her migraine. She sees a doctor. He tells her, oh no, your blood's coagulating. Drink some wine to thin that out. She starts drinking wine with every meal. She still feels a little lightheaded, woozy. Her roommate starts to piece together that she hears weird snoring that is characteristic of the directress of the ballet school. She starts counting the steps of the directress to find out where the directress is going at night. Our heroine takes up the lead and finds a dark secret about the ballet school. One thing I loved about this movie was the music. It was just so intense. The music was pretty freaking great. Mm. Now, it's produced by a band called Goblin, and you definitely get that sense when oh, you're yeah. listening to it. It's a bunch of drums banging. There's this one guitar riff that's, that's like really creepy sounding, and that's it's so weird and, it, it's and out like, there. It's kind of like noise, but it works. It reminds music. me of The Residents, and I don't know if you're familiar with them, but it works. It's mm. creepy and intense, and I can definitely picture like a bunch of little green goblin yeah. men just, like, just like banging on drums. Cacophony. So I think we can all agree the music, banging. The visuals, pretty freaking good. The plot, not so great. It's fairly thin, and one thing that did bug me was this is supposedly the most prestigious ballet school in the entire world. They make a big point, at least I understand it, that this is a ballet student who's going on to become a great ballet artist, and the movie has almost no ballet. You have like one or two classes where you see people dancing around, and almost every time it's interrupted, the lady comes in, she's like, stop, 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 <laughs> no ballet. Well, it's really just like a setting for the movie, and it gives you an understanding to why Jessica Harper would put up with the stress, because she's already used to this. She's trying to be the best at something. Mm -hmm. So if weird things are going on, she might kind of ignore them for a while. She'll do the things that the angry teachers tell her to do. Just the eccentricities of a master. You know? Yeah. So this, you're saying this could have been anything, like a painting school or an mm. acting school or a ballet school. Or, or a bird studies conservatory. A bird studies and, conservatory. And it was also a good excuse to add to the visuals. You have this architecture that is very pleasing to the eye. It just adds to everything that they've been doing throughout the movie. It's kind of got this fairy tale aspect to it. Like it's a simple tale, just kind of giving a warning almost. Like, yeah, you beware of these type of situations. It's very reminiscent of a lot of books I read as a, a young reader. You have like Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz. She's struck into this new world where strange things are happening. You have Alice in Wonderland. Basically any classic fairy tale, it takes the main protagonist and throws them in a world where mysterious magical events are occurring and they're not always happy, they're dangerous. And so when you see her walking down that hallway and you see the woman with the, the shard of glass that's clearly putting some sort of spell on her, you just get this vibe like, okay, there's magic here. This isn't just a horror movie. There's, there's something supernatural happening. And you get that right from the beginning before they even mention a witch. And they did that pretty well, I have to say. One thing I noticed about this movie, uh, if you compare it to other movies of the 1970s, mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of misogyny and women are kind of treated as objects and you know if you've heard of the Bechdel test uh, it says that you know most films or media don't have two women talking to each other about something other than a man and this movie I thought passed and exceeded the Bechdel test because most yeah. of the movie was 
had nothing to do with any men. Right. The it women, wasn't about their relationships or, or wanted to, uh, you know, oh, my boyfriend or blah, blah, blah. Exactly. They're, they're women trying to solve a problem that is actively harming not only them, but their surroundings and their student body. Right. And the women are the victims of the witch, but they also are the the, the enemy, they're the witch as well. Right. It's really kind of revolutionary, especially, like you said, for the 1970s. You don't really see that a lot. I mean, film today, it's getting more and more towards that, which I appreciate. But at the same time, this film really stands out as one of its own. So the main reason that we decided to review this movie is there's a remake coming out in a few days, and I'm really curious to see how they do it, because I really love the original. I don't know how you guys felt. Uh, I thought it was pretty good, but I would rate it like a B plus. There's a lot to like, but overall, I don't really need to see it again. I feel like I got what I needed from the first time watching it. I'd give it like three thumbs up. Yeah, that's pretty good. So I'm really curious to see how they recreate some of the scenes. There's definitely some scenes that they could improve on. Well, there's well, one that comes to mind for the me. Bat. The bat. So our heroine gets attacked by a bat, and that was pretty comedic because the budget for that must have been pretty low because it's this tiny little fat bat little just animal. slapping around on the ground. <laughs> And she like throws a blanket on it. Yeah. I'm like, okay, at least she's gonna help it get back out the window. And then she smacks it with a stool. I just really hope they don't ruin that gargoyle scene because that's one of my favorite shots. What I liked about that scene was you pan to the gargoyle, you see this horrible stone gargoyle. Then you, you look back a little later after the music has gotten even more intense and the gargoyle's gone. And then the camera swoops down at the ground. You see the ground rushing up at you and then there's death. That's intense and that's scary. I found this beer by Stillwater Artisanal and Jolly Pumpkin called Losing Our Ledges and it has this wonderful artwork of a gargoyle on it. So, so I could always look at that. If they yeah, ruined exactly. that, at least you have the bottle. You with gargoyle. Yeah. Charles. 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 Now this is a hazy sour IPA, but there's really not a lot of aroma. And with most IPAs, you would feel like you would get like a blast of hop, hop smell. Mm. You don't really get that. Yeah, yeah, with a sour IPA, you should get some bitterness and you should get some tartness. And this one, it doesn't have either of the extremes, it really balances it out. Yeah, the overwhelming characteristic of this brew is the dryness. It's very, very dry and it works well because you do have a little bit of sourness, but it's not real tart. You do have some bitterness, but it leans more towards the dry side. It's, it's not like a, a punch to the mouth. Mm -hmm. It's pretty good. Yeah, I would say the same thing. It's uh, really well balanced for a sour IPA. One thing I have to say, it's ha it has a unique flavor that I, I'm not familiar with most beers, and I would say it's like a, a star fruit, if that makes sense. That's oh, what that that's is. That's exactly what it is. Okay, if you haven't had star fruit, try it out, and if you can get this beer, drink it immediately after. I get what you're saying 100%. It's like this, this slightly sour, slightly sweet, more yeah. on the tart side, but not overwhelming, just like a little bit, just enough to give it just a little push in the right direction. It's not overwhelming, it's pretty delicious, and it's, it's great. It's solid beer. It. So how are you getting home, Spuds? Uh, I hadn't thought about that. I guess I'm just gonna stick around here. <sighs> On my planet, I always get a bedtime story.